Dusty Rhodes, you're going to be meeting the Honky Talk Man, your last minute Ooh, thoughts. Ooh, let me tell you about my thoughts tonight. I've been so excited since my first date with Sally Good. And besides that, the facts are in. The man say, Dusty Rhodes, I am the proprietor of Heartbreak Hotel. I am the man that wears the blue suede shoes. You can't sing. <laughs> Proved you wrong. You can't dance. We know I can dance circles around you. And now you say prove to me in public, if you will, come and get it in SummerSlam. Excitement galore. So honk it down. Tonight. Just a few moments, you get your opportunity to show the public that Dusty Rose can't wrestle. And brother, you can mark this one down tonight. I'm going to kick you, booty! Ha! Hello and welcome to OSW Review Old School Wrestling. Yes, we are back once again for SummerSlam 1998. What? 1998? 1989? <laughs> ah, fuck. Right, one, once more. This is why I should script the opening, because I have to say <laughs> something. Phrase, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to OSW Review. You'd still do it at least twice. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling podcast where we chronologically critique the Hulkamania era where we go to a pay-per-view by pay-per-view and we are awesome at it. <laughs> 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 and uh, tonight we are going through SummerSlam 1989. Zeus, he's left God of War and he's come to the main event of SummerSlam. I've just ruined know. about ten of my poems now. <laughs> Oh shit! They were all Kratos. <laughs> oh, I've got no Kratos ones in this paper. Awesome. There we go. So, excellent, excellent to have you guys back. Uh, V1, how's it going? Not too bad. And I'll see. Alright. Alright, let's uh, do it soon. All the excitement of the World Wrestling Federation has filled the Middle Ends Arena. It's SummerSlam. The wait, the anticipation is over. Now it's time to finish. Shivani, joined in the broadcast location by Jesse the Body Ventura. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you, Shivani, don't you get out of line with me because I wrestled. You're the man responsible for Bobby Heenan getting run off the air. So you stay in line with me. Well, don't you worry about that, Jesse Ventura. But tonight, the big main event they're all talking about, Hulk Hogan, Brutus the Barber Beefcake against the Macho Man and Zeus. Unbelievable, Zeus. The man of destruction. Can Hogan get to him? I don't think so. And from there, we also have the Intercontinental matchup and much more. Away we go! SummerSlam. It's August 28, 1989 in the Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The attendance, 20,000 people, and our Nancy Snyder... <laughs> Tony Schiavone and Jesse Ventura. Yeah, Tony Schiavone, holy shit, what are you doing on a WWF broadcast? Alright, so we get a video montage of wrestling and various summertime activities to kick us off. So cycling, golfing, uh, eating ice cream. <laughs> I didn't get this. There was a kid on a space hopper. <laughs> uh, you brought your kids to the park now? In this opening montage, there was a kid doing the, you know, the uh, recruit pose. It was a bit, a little bit strange. <laughs> a little bit hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there, there was a woman driving her husband's car. It was like some kind of nice fancy Ferrari. She was a girl in the car. Yeah, yeah kid eating a well. well. What's going to get me excited about a colour a, a wrestling paper? Yeah. <laughs> and this is why we need editing. Yeah, okay, we got Chavante and uh, Jesse Ventura. So Vince actually signed them, obviously, in 1989. He'd hang around for the best part of a year backstage, but he only ever called two WWF pay-per-views. Uh, he was supposed to take Monsoon's place, and it was like... Pfft. 
thought he could replace him with Monsoon. It didn't work out. Sent him packing a couple of months later. Okay. So it's like this and Royal Rumble 1990, and then he's back to WCW at the end. He's fucking tiny looking next to Jesse. He looks like a small person. He is a radio sports anchor in Atlanta, Georgia. Pretty much just straight into it. He got a non-tag team title match between the Hart Foundation, so that's Brett and Anvil, versus the No Themes, the Brain Busters, Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson. They were the tag champions. What the fuck happened? They weren't tag champions. Yeah, last time WrestleMania 5, uh, Demolition successfully uh, defended their titles, and then we show up on SummerSlam and the Brain Busters had the belt. Well, yeah, there's a title change off the pay-per-view. On July 29th, the Saturday night's main event in Worcestershire, Massachusetts, um, there's a two, your favourite two out of three falls tag match where the Brain Busters beat Demolition. So that's what happened. Could have showed that, uh, that as, a, w- as a promo package. But, you know. No, no. I had to watch this with Greg and, you know, I was recounting his little, you know, rugged Ronnie Garbage and that stuff. A uh, lot, lot more of him to come. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, as soon as the Brain Busters came on, it's like, oh, fudge fingers and toadstool. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> so 25 years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. To start off, much, yeah, the Brain Busters, they were denied the tagging out twice. One time, Tully was using the bottom rope for an extra reach to tag out Aaron Anderson, and the ref waved it off. And the second time, Aaron tried to tag Tully's foot, and the ref said, none of that. I thought the Brain Busters were absolutely awesome. I know last uh, show, we had a little mini argument about Aaron selling when he was trying to get to the ropes there was another spot that was quite like that in uh, this show Aaron was going for Tully's hand to tag in but just as he did tag in uh, I think Brett who pulled his legs and just how he actually sold him falling and still trying to kind of reach for his hand I saw it was just those little things that Aaron was really awesome at or terrible at no awesome <laughs> <laughs> I thought both teams were fantastic oh, awesome. yeah. they really gave uh, the Hartford Nation the rub they got like the majority they were battering the heels for the majority of this match I thought yeah absolutely loved this match great chemistry between the two teams this is how to do a tag match Amen. lots of tags heat Brett does a lovely body slam arm behind the back Aaron gets a shoulder cut. You never see that move anymore. anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's a real late 80s, early 90s thing. Daniel Bryan be doing that for working over for the shoulder lock. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. There was an amazingly contrived double key lock escape by Brett and he reversed it into uh, two hip tosses, I guess. Yeah, it great was, it, it traditionally only kept for the big men, but I just got with it. Like, mm. you know, Anvil misses like a super hoe train. It was the thing with all the tag matches, like the tag partner would like just whip him in the corner to make it a bit faster. Just mm-hmm. Everyone did that. Yeah. Do we get that today? Not really, well, we don't no. get tag teams today, sounds hard to say. There was one gorgeous spot where Tully had Brett in a shoulder lock and Brett bridged out to break out of it. Thought that looked yeah. absolutely awesome. Brett just looking better every show. Except his face was Johnny Bland. He had no emotion. I actually noted that. I just thought maybe he, he's just a bitter man. Like it didn't take much for Montreal to turn him into really bitter guy. <laughs> you know? Like you'll see it... Uh, as we come off, you know, whenever he loses a match, just the expression on his face, it's like, I it's, cannot believe this happened to me. This is it's imagine how he'd feel injustice, like. a real fighter would feel when he lost an actual fight. It just, it's still real to him, damn it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's an absolute star. I, I can't believe how long it took to pull the trigger on Brett. Thought it was funny, um, the classic Brett spot. Some guy's on the ground, he has the two legs and he's going to do the big stomp into the gut. And Tony's like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. But aren't legs stronger than arms? You know, couldn't you just push him away? <laughs> Hopefully he was suitably weakened, so that wouldn't be the case. But he was like, no, he looked pretty, pretty... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so the finish of the match is Almo gets a slingshot shoulder tackle to Tully, then reverse slams Brett onto Tully. Uh, Brain distracts the ref. Aaron gets a double axe handle in, and Brain gets Tully out as Aaron covers Brett, and he like hides his face so he can't see the illegal man's in, and gets the win at fifteen fifty-five. Uh, just a question here: in any other scenario, uh, other than just kind of reversing and getting a pin, would a double axe handle get you a three count? 
Because mm. I never no. Okay. Good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, in the difference between a promo segment and a match. It's like if you punch someone in a promo segment, Duh. they're out. Yeah. <laughs> they're done. Like. <laughs> but if it's in a match, it doesn't even flinch. Them. Also, also in, in within a match, you know, you have to do the open fists. Well, I know they change yeah. it all these days, but there it's an ODQ match or they're outside. They still do open fists. Or they just deck you in the face. Because they'd actually deck them in the face. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. K-fabe. I love that. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, this is absolutely brilliant match. This is the best opening match since like Steamer at like WrestleMania two or something. You know, just it was really mm. good. Uh, it got me into the match, and it's something that back in the eighties was sorely lacking. That really high paced opening match to kind of perk up the crowd and get you built up and stuff like that. Uh, excellent job done by all four men. Thumbs up. Awesome. Anyway, okay, so Mean Gene interviews Dusty Rhodes, baby. Oh, yeah. Fuck, I didn't know he was in and like, oh my God, here he is. Amazing Dusty promo. <laughs> Piss myself laughing. I was actually watching this match with Andrea. She says, he sounds black. That's what he's going for, yeah? He's got a southern Creole, is it? Oh, like that, Lu- Louisiana it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of... New Orleans. Yeah, yeah New yeah, Orleans, Orleans kind of thing. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It was fantastic. I have to say that since they paired him up with such a strong gimmick in Honky Donk Man, he could just list off anything to do with like Elvis and all that kind of Heartbreak Hotel and just, oh, he can go off into space with it. And he did. He and did, awesome. didn't he? <laughs> can, I, can I ask you, Jay, yeah. why did they bury Dusty I mean you know he had the polka dot and, and the whole lot he could have been a big draw in WWF um, well funny you should ask that it's because Vince didn't particularly want him but he didn't want NWA to have him oh, he was the booker and a three time world champion in the NWA and then they were on TV and the execs said don't fucking blade and I was like eh, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> get out <laughs> and so the WWF got Dusty and Flair got to feud with Steamboat so you know happy days for everyone but uh, Vince is like, all right, so you're fired and coming to me. Get this on you. <laughs> so yeah, we get straight into it. Dusty Rose versus the Honky Tonk Man. I was expecting, since it was Dusty's debut, to do a quick job, actually. But it was the best part of 10 minutes. Um, oh, to start, Ch- Chavante just marks out for Dusty coming out. <laughs> that was really funny. Um, yeah, they get over the dangerousness of Dusty's elbow, which is great. Um, Sorry, I, is it the bionic elbow or is it like the vionic elbow? I've no idea is what it, the hell. Is it Vanna White or is <laughs> or it Vanna, Vanna White? <laughs> so, I think it's bionic. As it's in, the bionic elbow. As in a robotic, I guess. Would it not make more sense for him to hit people with the elbow that doesn't have the elbow pad? Un- unless it's like Chris Hero loaded pad, but mm. that's not his gimmick, right? No, of course not. Maybe it's... What, that might be illegal. Does anyone do an elbow that's on the sheath? I'm sure that, <laughs> I'm sure there's loads of wrestlers that yeah. don't wear it. I think it's and... I, I that that's completely right. It's the opposite of what would make sense. But I imagine it's like pay attention to this elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did the boss man not kill Dusty for wearing his stuff? Like <laughs> he's wearing a police hat yeah. and his nightstick. What what's that got to do with the polka? Dance? I have no. I don't get it. I I don't know. I don't know, it's just awesome. <laughs> it's just bizarre it's, and strange and awesome. Yeah. It's just... Did he even use the nightstick in the match? No, no. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, lots of comedy spots, like at the start, Dusty was strutting, and instead of giving him the big elbow and building up to it, he ruffled Honky's hair instead. <laughs> that was great. The, yeah, the match was shit enough. Dusty was so over. and He is a master of working the crowd. Maximum pop for minimum effort, like... There was a terrifying zoom on his arse and muffin top. <laughs> <laughs> it lasted for ages. And it was not the only one of the night. Uh, so there's a sneaky megaphone shot uh, to the dummy. And that turns the tide and Honky gets a bit of action as well. There was a long ass sleeper in and a chin lock spot. And then Honky would break out and, you know, you'd be like, oh, thank God. No. Nope. Another chin lock. And this this probably happened about three or four times. It lasted a solid two minutes. That this is too... I, know, I don't want to say sports entertainment, but this is like... But it's two characters wrestling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the wrestling is the least important thing in this match. It's getting Dusty's and their mannerisms over and this, their storyline. So, Alright, so the finish is the Hunky Dog Man reverses Rhodes into the ref. 
uh, Honky calls Jimmy Hart together and he gets the guitar and oh my god he hits the heel instead over the head and so Dusty gets the elbow drop and Dusty picks up the win at 9.40 there we go so did the uh, guitars smash back then because this one didn't no no it didn't this match sucked as a wrestling match but as a spectacle and uh, crowd reactions and characters and stuff it was alright overall but the action was god awful Honky cut a pretty cool promo after the match where he was totally out of it and he thought that Jimmy was uh, Priscilla, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They were doing the concussion angle thing, which... Yeah, that was that's good. That was good. Tw- that's 20 yeah. years before it's time, isn't yeah, it? Well, that's, I mean, yeah. And back then it was funny. All right, so Mean Gene interviews Demolition and Hacksaw Jim Duggan, apparently. In a gimp mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird because this show, so much shit has happened since WrestleMania and nobody <laughs> gives you a uh, video montage of what happens, you know? So it's like... Especially with the tag titles. That, that one really mm. bugged me. Because we got pretty good recaps for the world and the IC, but mm. nothing for the tag match. Yeah, and like, how dare they not know that we were going to do these podcasts, you know, in 20, 30 years' time? Like. <laughs> no <laughs> forethought at all. <laughs> Come on, Vince. But he, like, and I, and I was, I've been given out about it plenty of times. Uh, we should probably go through this now. Okay, so Mean Gene interviews Demolition and Hacksaw Jim Duggan complete with okay his 4x4 is now painted in an american flag which is awesome and he is himself is wearing a crown but also his 4x4 is wearing a crown and he has a gimp mask on um you know explain what have we you know what have we missed we uh, clearly we've missed a lot here (laughs) this is a thing that is pretty cool about the 80s so when you join forces with a team you have to like don their attire for the night and have a bit of crack this promo by the way was awesome it was just another 80s grunty shouty promo screaming at the camera two by four with a crown that's a win all right so massive win (laughs) all right so cut to mr perfect who's in the ring still no song what's going on versus Uh, versus the Red Rooster. You should be called like the Robot Rooster. That'd be awesome, mm. wouldn't it? <laughs> Robo Rooster. <laughs> As the story goes, Miss Perfect gimmick and Red Rooster gimmick we've given out on the same day. All right, Rooster does his kind of jutting jaw <laughs> rooster peck stuff. And uh, yeah, Perfect Moxham does it as well. Jesse gets on Rooster's case for brawling while Perfect is wrestling. Oh, that's quite smart. And there was a great uh, running off the rope spot by both men to open up, and Perfect hits a lovely drop kick. Other than that, this match clucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the finish of the match is they brawl on the outside, and Perfect brings it back in the ring and just jobs him out with the Perfect Plex at 321. Clean win. That's it. Uh, we get a quick place card for the Survivor Series. And then we get a Mean Gene interview with the Intercontinental Champion Rick Rude with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Gentlemen, as you know, the ultimate warrior. Nice move. Fuck it. The ultimate warrior. Nice move. Fuck it. The ultimate warrior. Nice move. Fuck it. Gene says that Warrior promised to regain the IC title and Rude says, oh, he's the ultimate liar. Heenan says, oh, he has a great line. You don't need to wear makeup anymore because you, after the match you're going to have one black eye and one blue eye. So that was pretty cool. Yep. All right, first six-man tag is the first of the night. Uh, we got the Rockers and Tito Santana versus the Rougeos and Rick Martel with two heel managers, Slick and the Colonel Jimmy Hart. And all I thought was Steve must be, like, unbuttoning the top trouser. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it was amazing. You get the full Montreal to Memphis song. Oh, yeah. And you get Quebec capes and the mullet and moustache, obviously. It, it was great. Did you notice five mullets in this match? <laughs> I actually didn't <laughs> notice that. But... Six if you count Jimmy Hart. Wow. <laughs> so it's uh, everyone except Jacques Rougeau has a mullet. It's amazing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Martel is brilliant in this match. He's huge. No memory of this man being this large. He's done a complete heel turn at this point. I mean, it's been long enough since WrestleMania. Mm. But I think he's great. You know, the real cocky, smarmy, kind of sneaky heel. Does a great job. 
I like the fact that he's trying to stay away from Tito the you know the majority of the match just getting mm-hmm. in the odd few cheap shots here and there but Jay what has happened between Wrestlemania 5 and SummerSlam with regards to to the strike force breakup your favourite angle the tag team breakup <laughs> There's been so many memorable tag team breakups. Like. <laughs> N- nothing. Uh, Tito gets battered for the majority of the match, and when Tito splashes Jacques, uh, Venture equips that he almost pulled one out of his Mexican hat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm all for heel managers, but there's two heel managers for one team, right? Did you know Martel could get himself over? He doesn't need um, Slick to get him over. Slick. The worst of all the managers. Yeah, he's, he's useless. Yeah. And then the Rougeaus don't need a manager the either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, heel managers are sorely lacking in this day and age, but there's really no need for every single heel wrestler to have a manager. I totally agree with that. On this show, it kind of, kind of reached, you know, the, my, 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 point, yeah. my, my fill of managers. Hmm. And yeah, you know, when you've got two or three out there in the, in the one match, it does get too much. Hmm. I think maybe it's a bit of a payday thing. And also, if nobody wants the job, so he makes sure that manager gets in there and screw you finish and he can show his arse. I think yeah. that's probably more of it than anything else, because uh, nobody liked to lose back in the day. Mm. Uh, so the finish of the match is Sean gets the hot tag and cleans house. The crowd go fucking mental for this. And it descends into a schmoz. And in the confusion, Martel pins Gennetti at 14.57. Um, so this, I found this finish, was very similar. Heels pull one out of the bag, despite the rest of the match, like the Brainbusters did. Yeah. yeah, I thought this match was very good. It, just, you know, uh, it wasn't as good as the Hearts against uh, Aaron and Tully, but uh, I felt that the Rockers didn't do enough. They were kind of on the sidelines, and I totally get it because you want to build up Rick Martel against Tito. It would have been better just to have those two have a singles match considering this is your big show of the summer. Hmm. It's weird. This is like he's turned heel, but he's not the model. So it's a very odd yeah. time for Martel. So we get a recap of the Warrior. Okay, so we get a recap of the Warrior, Warrior Rude feud. <laughs> It's difficult. <laughs> it is, it is. Warrior Rude. We've got a recap of the Warrior Rude feud. Uh, the pose down at the Rumble. Rude cheating uh, to win the Icy Belt at Mania. The sneak attack on Primetime Wrestling. Warrior returns the favour at Superstars of Wrestling. Rick Rude mm. was going to kiss the woman and you just see Warrior running in. Loved it. Loved Should have kissed him. <laughs> 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 and also bring in Andre, who's also in Heenan's camp, doing his kind of choke, double Ionia nerve grip. Stand <laughs> spot, um, and then we get an amazing warrior promo, and his face is the same color as his purple face paint. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have just seen that. Amazing- the conditions that I have have already continued to worsen as I have broken loose from all the straight tickets and all the rubber rooms across these weak planets. And you, Andre the Giant, will realize that the power will become the eighth one of the world as we eat you alive. But you, ravishing Rick Rude, as I promised, you will surrender to the gods above as I beat you. One, two, three. Let's go back to the arena. It. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Uh, I heard the words God and power. Yep, pretty much. I think that was all. That's all I could understand from this promo. But, it, but much like Dusty's, yeah, it works. It was amazing. But he doesn't have to say anything. Exactly. He just has to shout rubbish and, and shake and yeah, yeah, yeah. and it works. Go, and go and go a bit mental. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I flipped out watching this. It was, it was great, so wasn't amazing. it? Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's the Intercontinental Champion Rick Rude with Bobby Brain Heenan versus the Ultimate Warrior. And you know Rick Rude. He's got his SummerSlam jocks on. The Warrior face is on the front and. Feel the heat on the back. Very nice. Which is the tagline to this year's SummerSlam. <laughs> uh, Rude's disrobing shtick is fucking great. Uh, especially when he called the fans, uh, you SummerSlam sweat hogs. <laughs> that That's good, good stuff. That's good but, stuff. By the way, this is, you know, it, I've noticed it for the, the whole pay-per-view, but 
the crowd are fucking phenomenal. Yeah, in they're hot for this. And uh, pardon the pun. You can feel the heat. And uh, yeah, I mean, compared to WrestleMania Five, where they were just so dead, it's, it's such a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Um, so yeah this is all warrior rude has his working boots on holy shit um, it's at the start of the match you know they schmoz to the outside hits rude with the title belt and Ventura flips out saying this should be a DQ and he goes off onto Shivani who actually says oh it's outside the ring excuse he tore apart for, and rightfully so Shivani is sounded like a fucking muppet like did Warrior just fuck this up? I oh, yeah. reckon so, yeah. yeah. I reckon he just kind of lost his plot and... Got too excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually felt that this match had that kind of big match feel about it. The, the, the kind of Hogan-Andre, Macho Man Savage, you know, obviously not that big because it's not main event, but I was watching this and obviously it's like 23 years later and I, I was really pumped up for this match and I had memories of that god-awful Mania match in my head as well because that was stanking, like... The build-up has been great. Yeah. It's like the um, this year Daniel Bryan Sheamus feud. You know, that's been built up for a year. Yeah. You know, and phenomenally for the year. I mean, the, the two of them have just been across the ring, you know, psyching each other out, cutting promos on each other. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh, my God. Third ref bump in four matches. The Warrior no-sells Rude's offense and, like, finishes him with a power slam. And, my God, Rude was... Uh, out of his mind, but he let Warrior do a pile driver. Rude survives with a foot on the rope, and he eventually turns the tide with blocking a splash. Now, there is a terrifying, like, pile driver turned tombstone. <sighs> oh. That is gonna into. Rude does it on Warrior. No, yeah. oh, it's it, like it's, the power bomb. No, no, no. It's Rude does it to Warrior. Yeah, yeah. power bomb slash pile driver. Yeah, he was gonna bang him up for a pile driver, but then he, like, overarches and then ends yes. up kneeling. Yeah, it was like the, the kind of reverse tombstone thing. Yeah. That was yeah. scary. Man. And that was... in fairness to Warrior, you know, tucks his head in and yeah. he's alright, but could have been nasty. A lot of pile drivers in this match from both. From both. Yeah. That's the go to move. Like, I didn't like that at the start of the match they went outside the ring twice. It's the, you know, talk about taking shortcuts. It was like fucking Taker and Triple H last year at Mania. Straight outside Straight the ring. Straight outside, yeah. You know, I, I really, nine times out of ten, it's terrible. On occasion, it really works, but no, it's it, a, a shortcut that uh, didn't need to be taken. Shivani starts to really annoy me, I know you've already mentioned him, but like, do you notice the way his, his go to. Uh, phrase if there's a move pile driver <laughs> <Power slide>! <laughs> Yate! <laughs> did you guys see Rude's fist drop from the top rope what was that <laughs> what was that <laughs> are you supposed to like put your boot up and hit me in the face <laughs> yeah I did just Warrior was just having a little rest, was he? <laughs> now, this is a legit spot. He's done the jumping punchy on the ground before. It's a move that but he's it, done more than once. Like. But it looks like he was bracing himself to take a back bump that never came. And he just kind of places his hand on him and rolls away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the storyline of this, quite, quite a long, actually, finishing spot. Like thing is that Rude can't finish the Warrior. And then Piper makes his way to the ring. Rude eventually sees him and starts gyrating at him. And Piper returns in kind and shows him his arse. And when Warrior hits the German off the second rope, uh, the second angle shows that Rude lands on his face. I reckon Warrior was backstage like, Oh, my, my fucking God, me. he just be... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so, my God... Rude, bumping like a boss. Oh, yes, he was. He, well, he definitely oh, was. Yes. He made Warrior look like a million bucks. Uh, so Warrior gets the win at 16 minutes. There shouldn't have been any interference. I know they're trying to get on a feud with Piper and Rude, mm -hmm. but Warrior should have won this match clean. Is there any particular reason that Piper came out? Because, you know, obviously there was nothing mentioned in the pre package. Uh... I'll see you at the Summer Slam. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> shit, the Survivor's here. <laughs> and that's it, really. It's like, uh, so, not really fighting fit, but, you know, let's... So, let's basically, they were again. setting up a yeah. feud as opposed to, okay, yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, but when uh, Piper flashes his arse, yeah. um, Rude gets so annoyed, he jumps on the second row. On the rope. second row, yeah. It's like, he's, what's he, is he trying to get closer to or further away? Why do people, why do wrestlers do that when they're really annoyed? Oh, I'm going to jump up higher and give him to you. <laughs> You might think I'm slightly taller. <laughs> this wrestling's amazing, and that's why it's doing. Oh, the shoulder! Roddy Piper caused this whole 
whole thing. Rude had this match won. I don't know if he had it won or not. He certainly had the advantage. And now the advantage is all Ultimate Warriors. This was horrible. This is an atrocity. I can't believe Morella would allow Piper to come out here and distract the champion. High over his head. Drops him down. The Warriors. Rolls it over. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this fight has won two Intercontinental Champions, the Ultimate Warrior, an absolute incredible match. Yeah, Warrior, he was protected really well in this. Like, he didn't look like he was ever going to lose this match, despite everything Rude threw at him. It was like, as a match in itself, it was nothing special. But then when you compare it to Mania 5, Warrior against Rude, it was like two new people wrestling. It was just like a different match. So thumbs up to Rude. Yeah, overall, decent match. Yeah, I thought it was decent. Um, preferred the segment from the Rumble. It's great to see the IC belt actually mean something. It really does. It's it's just a notch below the world title, which is great. And I love Warrior swinging the belt around. Always good. Nowadays, I would think, okay, Rude's dropped the IC title. He's going to be pushed now onto main event. Obviously, that never happened. But I think Rude would have to kind of shake up his gimmick a little bit to be a main eventer, especially his entrance theme. It's not a main event entrance theme. It's quite mid cardy comedy yeah, yeah, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'd agree with that, yeah. definitely. All right, so we get a perfect interview with Mean Gene, says the word perfect 20 times, gets over beating the rooster. The um, irony is that it was only okay. Hey. <laughs> um, this is, I hope you mentioned it, Steve. So uh, we finished the perfect interview. There's no editing. Straight into a hot rod promo where whatever he talks about, perfect. I, I thought it was shite. Kayfabe me on this one, but how does this promo segment work that... Is there a line of wrestlers and it's like <laughs> one in, one out, you know? Cause take it, take it. Because it's like heels and faces, or did they just come along at the opportune time when one guy's leaving, some guy happens to be passing? Or If you want to un kayfabe it, in like real sports, they, they just have, you know, the, the kind of sponsor backgrounds. Someone is there with a mic and when an athlete walks past, they try to grab them and talk to them. Which is fine because they don't hate each other. Yeah. These people. Like, yeah. A lot of these people don't want to be like in the same There was like less room. than five seconds between it was, people coming and going. Yeah, like, it was like, man, maybe this stuff is fake, you know? What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous, thing, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Fucking love wrestling. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. He says, I oh, watch the Scotsman wear under their kilts, and he says, a pair of shoes. You know, that, that Pretty sure they're, they're on your feet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not comfortable hitting off your balls. Like. <laughs> Maybe they're like baby shoes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps his balls one in each. <laughs> she just got some egg cups. <laughs> I used to know this girl. She had abnormally large nostrils and she used to love giving blowjobs to blokes and uh, your balls sat in her nose perfectly when she was <laughs> So we used to call her egg cups. <laughs> Like like sixty liner position. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big, big twisty balls. <laughs> hey, cups. Sorry, I just came flooding back to me there. I thought of that poor girl in about ten years. <laughs> and I thought it was because she had small tits. <laughs> um. And then and then of course Steve's boy comes out. Yes. Oh, I love He's now this. Your boy. Rubbish, Ronnie Garbage was awesome here. <laughs> so what did he say? Yeah, come on, Steve. Right? He he comes out and says nothing, looks terrified, and then Bobby Heenan comes out. <laughs> muscles him, muscles him out of the way. Bobby Heenan, the weasel. <laughs> and he just kind of, oh shit, sorry. Uh, no, I, I have to say, at this point, I was absolutely behind Greg and his... Thoughts and ah, Steve, <laughs> you can't do that, man. <laughs> It'll change later. You're such a Garvin booster. <laughs> It'll like. change later, though. <laughs> Classy bloke, obviously. Honey Garvin, dressed to the nines this evening for SummerSlam. What's the tuxedo all about? Well, I've got a special assignment tonight. Wait a minute, you're not going to be a broadcaster. You're not out looking for my job, are you? No, 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 no. Don't worry, Mean Gene. 
Well, I'll tell you, what, what is the... Can I take a look in the just inside? A minute, to just play? a minute. You have fun I'm with these guys. Oh, wait a say. second. I don't want to talk to... I don't want you to interview anybody but me right now. He then, he's straight in and Rude comes in and they just give out about losing the belt. Oddly, it's not time for the main event, but we do get the main event build-up. We get a bit of here's no holds barred. Here's the Saturday night's main event build up. There's Zeus. I have to mention that. Yeah, the movie uh, No Holds Barred starring Tiny Lester, Zeus here, and Hogan was released in June 1989. So obviously before SummerSlam to lead up to SummerSlam. So you go see it in theaters, then go watch SummerSlam. But they did have the SummerSlam match with Savage, and then Zeus hangs around DBLC at the Survivor Series. And then when they're ready for the, like, the network debut of No Holds Barred on TV in December, they bring back uh, Zeus and Savage, the oh, tag yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so No Holds Barred, the match, the movie, which is the name of this event, this pay-per-view event, where they have the movie and then they have a tag team match. In a okay. Cage. And that's oh, in December yeah, yeah, yeah. 89. So there was a build-up between Hogan and Zeus, obviously for a, a number of months beforehand. So my question is, why would anyone want to go and see Hogan and Zeus fight in a fake movie where, as they're building these guys up to fight in a real match? So in that respect, you either go and pay your 10 bucks to see the I movie. The WWF tried to portray the film as like a shoot, didn't they? They did, yeah. Oh, was that how they did yeah. it? It is an odd one because uh, you know the way wrestling's fake and action movies are 100% real? You know, so <laughs> in Rand McNally. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is weird having a fucking phony action star in with real wrestlers. I have no idea what's going on. Did you on with see that. Um, the kayfabe required to <laughs> go along with it? Just kind of you have to wrap your head around this, don't you? <laughs> uh, what did you think of Zeus's? Face right to the camera. <laughs> Zeus doing the scene of face, man. Priceless. <laughs> but he's Absolute got the eyes, man. It's great. He is a Johnny Gunner eye, isn't he? Mm. he yeah, he's got a pretty bad uh, was it, isotropia on his right eye. Uh. It's just like, hoo, loo, loo, loo. <laughs> Jesus Christ, mate, get some glasses. What would, what, what would he see? Do you know the way? <laughs> <laughs> He'd see in, like, dog vision. <laughs> see a lot of people in like white hoodies and like and burning like, crosses <laughs> I'm asking in a medical opinion from two doctors <coughs> peripheral vision for the outside yeah. would be totally fucked so if like he was a boxer or something and someone is throwing a left hook he wouldn't see it like. right okay yeah. yeah but in terms of looking straight ahead he'd it, be it's right. fine okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. it's just his like kind of extraocular muscles are kind of getting f- fucked and they have to lean on the ones that are working a bit more and so it gets progressively worse And it can be fixed when you're a child you slap a patch on for six weeks and it fixes itself oh, really? it's just really bad parenting yeah, yeah. this guy is just a fucking monster he's huge yeah my goodness um, was this guy like an NFL player or anything beforehand because I yeah. don't know who he is oh other than Zeus. Zeus? Zeus. Oh, well, I was with me. Dusty Talking Rhodes. To me whole, really. <laughs> uh, he was Debo in uh, 1995's Friday with, uh, was it Ice Cube? And I've never seen that movie. Scoopy, 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 Scoopy Dog yeah, Dog yeah, and the it's, rest. Like. It's, yeah, he's been in a few movies. Yeah. And uh, he was the prisoner on the boat in... Um, uh, Dark Knight. <laughs> Dark Knight, yeah. He was like, give it to me. I say, I say, I talk it off. Yeah. Was that Give him? It. That's Debo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Savage uh, is on the Brother Love Show and he brings out Zeus with sensational Sherry. What's going on here, lads? I got me a manager. That is unbelievably sensational. Man, what a brilliant maneuver by Randy Macho Man Savage. Here I thought he'd name maybe Bobby the Brain Heenan, maybe the mouth of the South Jimmy Hart, but instead, sensational Sherry. Terrific. Miss Elizabeth, there is some concern as to whether or not you will continue to stand by the side of the World Wrestling Federation champion, Hulk Hogan. There is even, there is even some concern as to whether or not you will continue to be his manager. Will you please respond to these allegations? As long as Hulk Hogan needs me, I'll be there. 
Yeah, well, Hogan didn't fire those earrings just to try. What has happened in the last three months? It's fucking a year's worth of storyline. Could they, they do an enormous promo package? Could they not have shown how clearly I was involved? right last month and uh, Liz shouldn't have backed him? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that felt good after your Daniel Bryan slag in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, one on one, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, all right. Let us get away from this problem package, and we'll save the rest for the main event, which is still many bad matches. <laughs> all right, so we got a six-man tag. Another one. It slicks Twin Towers and Andre the Giant at a combined weight of one thousand three hundred thirty-four pounds, or an average of four hundred forty-five pounds each. I'm not buying it. No? Want to see? 4.45 on average? I reckon that's not that far off, real. I reckon Andre at this point is five between 550, 600. Do you think so? No. That's like Yokozuna kind no, of weight. No, he's less Yokozuna than 500. Yokozuna was, was like 800 pounds. Andre, Andre, Andre wouldn't be... Imagine would, going to the toilet after him. <laughs> imagine being the toilet. <laughs> oh! Holy... What's this? <laughs> Why would anyone be a toilet? <laughs> Go <Just> to Japan! <laughs> <laughs> and this is why we're a video, or an audio podcast. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you see there was someone in the crowd had a demolition will topple the Twin Terror sign? Yes! And then they got the Twin Terrors toppling. <laughs> That's bad stuff. Uh, that's fucking. Should have had Nostradamus <laughs> shit there. <laughs> a kid could have been very rich. A kid with it. What do they wear? Or did a tea towel on his head. <laughs> <laughs> a young Osama did <laughs> that. Yeah, we all know it's Hulk Hogan that toppled the Twin Towers. <laughs> um, all right, versus Demolition and King Jim Duggan. You never mentioned how he became king. That's because they didn't mention it. <laughs> Yeah, Duggan beat Haku in a house show in May in Davenport, Iowa, and he won the title of the king. So it's like, it's kind of like a title, mm. but you win a gimmick. Yeah. You know? And you, you have to dress yeah. up in a stupid costume. It's not worth yeah. it at all, is it? It depends who it is, I guess. Like, it didn't work for Haku, but. It didn't know, work for Harley Race. No. So. Actually, it generally doesn't work. <laughs> I think it worked for Macho Man, though. That's Macho true. and Owen Hart are pretty much yeah. two of the only ones who really oh, did anything. Billy Gunn as well. Mm. Billy Gunn was great, yeah. Mabel. Yeah, Mabel. King Mabel, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, King Seamus. Remember his amazing run? Oh, yeah. The fucking anti-streak, like. Fuck. King Jim Duggan here uh, takes off his gimp mask uh, to reveal he's painted a USA flag on his face. I kind of marked out to that a little bit. I, I, thought, a, I thought it was cool. He had a really red mouth. It's like he was bloodied or something, you know? It's a really, really red mouth. Maybe it was just paint. Could have been gargling the paint, I guess. <laughs> Could have been paint from the gimp ball. <laughs> <laughs> or it was the gimp ball. All right. Uh, <laughs> bit of backstage scar. Vince said that after Andre Stinker at WrestleMania there with Jake, do you remember that much? Um, yeah, no more singles matches for Andre. Thank so, God. Yeah. So he'll just be in like tag teams and like coming to the rings with heels until he winds down his career. It's it's such a shame that we never got to see Andre in his prime. He just does a fucking punch kick, the lean, and, yeah. the, and the choke. This is where we get a horrible zoomy shot of arse number two. It zooms in on Andre's big saggy hole for about 20 seconds. <laughs> No one wanted that. Is this? He has a kind of hike, hiked up his, his yes. ass back as well. Yes, uh, you can see the yeah. cheeks kind of. Yeah. He's got the old hungry bum. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he loved the hungry bum, don't you? <sighs> <laughs> I had no fucking choice in this show. Like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that the pay per view it really slumps here. You know, just Jesus, like because mm. the first half of the pay per view is pretty great, and then it's just a bit downhill from here. This match had the same finish as two matches earlier on in the show. Uh, heels are going to win. Bam, face hits him with something, gets the pin. Mm. All of the tag matches that had the same ending. Yeah, so exactly. I'd imagine there probably is one angel booking all the tag matches. I guess so. Dino. Um, <laughs> Dino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Akeem gets his a lovely Air Africa on Smash. Uh, but Duggan gets his USA 2x4 and cheats. And Smash gets the 3 at 7.24. A shitty brawl match. The usual kind of thing you'd expect. It's a typical clusterfuck ending. Yeah. But the crowd were into it. Yeah. 
a lot of strong characters yep. in the match still, but uh, yeah, the match is up to, I'd have this the worst match in the card up to this point. Yeah, yeah. So the Twin Towers, they'll split in early 1990, and uh, one man gang, he'll be gone by the end of that year. And uh, So there's a Thanksgiving promo card no one cares about, and then the Million Dollar Man cuts a promo about Snooker. Yeah, just a good promo, like mm. you'd think that he'd do. So. He's um he's he's going downhill now though at this point, doesn't he? Like I mean he's never gonna reach his yeah, heights again. WrestleMania four then even the rumble, you know, he was up there, you know, the big star at the end. Since then he hasn't really done anything. God, I actually have that exact point down. Hmm. Like he's the main event at every pay per view since WrestleMania four. And look at you now, mm. fucking coming back and having to sell for Jimmy Snooker. That was mm. like the uh, Bundy after Hogan slaughtered him, and and the Towers after Hogan slaughtered him. Jeez, it's yeah, like yeah. once Hogan is done with you, he's kind of done with you, isn't he? Mm. Like, <laughs> once he's had his way with you, once he's had his way. Right. So we get my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage comes out uh, dressed up in his tux and uh, he is announced as a nice little surprise and he is a special guest ring announcer and I'm gonna say I thought he did an alright job. Well you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, I fucking (laughs) would. I know I know I know it's mentioned, I think Ventura says who made him ring announcer. But, I mean, this guy is clearly feuding with Valentine. Yeah. So why would you get him to go out and announce the guy? He's obviously going to awesome. bury him. Like. Yeah, we <laughs> you let him. You let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> President Jack Tony clearly let him happen. His so-called opponent. So-called opponent. Well, that's an opinion. A little bit squeak. Poor excuse. I'm a manager. A big mouth of the South. Big mouth of the South. Hart. He claims he weighs 249 pounds. To me, he looks like he's overweight by 30 pounds. <laughs> How dare him do that as an announcer? You're fucking absolutely right. Um, after Valentine lost the match to Garvin, uh, he challenged him to a career versus career match, and Valentine won it. And so Garvin's kind of kayfabe retired, but he's still wrestling on the <laughs> show circuit. And uh, he do like, oh, I'm the ref, or I'm the announcer, or I'm whatever shit. What he'd do is he'd have just altercations with whoever the heel is, and he'd end up getting into fisticuffs with them. And then Funny Jack Tunney goes away and say, oh, you're, you're fired as a an announcer. And rehired as a... <laughs> <laughs> I love yes. it! Uh, Valentine got annoyed enough to say, I want him back so I can fight him. But, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to wait for that big payoff. So. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you when because you won't watch the pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that uh, I, I thought that his burial of Valentine was... It was all right, but, you know, it's it's better than no build. You know what I mean? Try right? it because of his quips there, would you? <laughs> he, he was like, yeah, I'm coming down to the ring, the rubbish Valentine, <laughs> the state of your hair, mate. Uh. <laughs> oh, Greg Valentine. He doesn't know whether he's coming or going. <laughs> what does that mean? He's stupid. <laughs> and you're coming at the ring with big mouth of the set. <laughs> <laughs> WrestleMania 8. Uh, Ray Combs, a guy from Family Feud, he actually did the same shtick. He was the special announcer and he'd heckle the Mountie and he'd be like, haha, okay, so here's the Mountie. <laughs> and the survey said he does the work of three men Curly, Larry, and. <laughs> the survey said. The sur- <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Hold on. At least it's not Morton of Borton. Downey. Downey. <laughs> Hold on, Danny had a couple of good ones. Did he? Yeah, he did. Go on. Really? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, fuck me. This was a plodding match, but thankfully it was short. So only a couple of kick punch matches until Valentine uses the WrestleMania 2 finish as he uses the ropes as leverage and gets the illegal throw. Out of nowhere, like, he was the one getting battered. And then he just, like, a double leg and, oh, and he pins him. Uh, yeah, and no reaction whatsoever from the crowd. No, I, I have to say, 
Shite. <laughs> that's because Rodney wasn't wrestling at the moment. So Garbage announces Hercules won, and then Valentine shoves him out of the this? ring. Oh my god. Okay, I know they did it because, like, towards the late 80s and early 90s, whenever they replayed Hogan's reaction, they'd add in more cheers because he was starting to get booed because they're sick of your shit. Mm. He's your champion for six years. When rubbish garbage took off his jacket, the crowd, like, fucking Hogan popped for him. The toe in the ring, the hammer of Hercules continuing. Even after Valentine won the bomb. Look at Garbage. Here's the kid. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking Smackdown with just seagull fucking crowd cheer <laughs> <laughs> Seven feet tall, a little over 400 pounds will be inside the Brothers in Law. <laughs> what? If you believe it. He's gonna weigh in on the challenge will enter last in the war. When he wanna go in there and Speed! Daniel Bryan understand he is beyond his depth. <laughs> Maybe just Ronnie had this unbreakable bond with the crowd and they were totally <laughs> into everything he did. Oh god, well they will be on opposing teams at the next paper game. Oh thank god. Are they captains? <laughs> no. They <laughs> should be. Oh my god. You're under rubbish garbage. Hogan, Ronnie Garvin. Hogan, Ronnie Garvin. The hammer. <laughs> With his front bump. <laughs> Alright, so we guess this is definitely in the 80s. If this is like... <laughs> I thought it was like Power Rangers or something, wasn't it? It was like yeah. Rita and was it Lord Zed around the fucking cauldron. It was awesome. I thought it was great. Needs more Eye of Newt. <laughs> and the world is in this cauldron. Oh, mean Gene Okerlund. This is the cauldron of madness that we have spoke of oh so fondly in the past month. <gasps> What will help us destroy Hulk Hogan, Brutus Beefcake? Ah! Oh, I look in there, what do I see? I see Hulk Hogan laying flat on his back. And another thing, what do I see? Brutus Beefcake! He's good, he's finished! And then, hopefully, hopefully we can see what's going to happen oh. with Miss Elizabeth if she's... Here, where is she? Where is she? What's cooking, is Macho she? Man? Where is she? Unbelievable. I see the same things that Sensational yeah. Series sees, only I see them a little smaller, yeah. <laughs> like in itsy bitsy pieces, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I see the weak link, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Oh, yeah, in the bottom of the cauldron of madness, yeah. And I also see Hulk Hogan, yeah, on the bottom of the cauldron of the madness, and it's because of the human record. Machine, yeah! impervious to pain, and I told you, Hulk Hogan, that this was the end of the road, and I am looking at the end of the road, and also I see sensational Sherry, you with Miss Elizabeth. Yeah, the possibility yeah. is unbelievable. Thank yeah. you very what much. Have I'm a little bit fired off. Let's get back up to the yeah. ring. <laughs> An amazing Witch's Cauldron promo with Sensational Sherry, Macho Man Randy Savage, and Zeus. What's going on? <laughs> what is this? It's such a shame you could never do this in this day and age. You'd Imagine never get Imagine Randy Orton, who was just <laughs> <laughs> fucking stirring the pot like, literally. Sherry is definitely getting better at yeah. this point. Yeah, God, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. we're getting there. We I getting mean, there. she's gonna, at least she's given up being a wrestler. Let's focus on being a manager. It's starting to work. Um, post WrestleMania 5 on the Brother Love Show, Macho Man fired Liz, and in the same segment, he replaced her with Sensational Sherry. And uh, Liz is kind of kind of stuck with Hogan there. So, uh, would have been nice if you mentioned this, but you know, yeah, there well, you go. Yeah, well. uh, on the video, I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, It'll make sense. That our review will make sense. Thank you, Jim. So we get the self-proclaimed million dollar champion versus Jimmy Snuckett. So despite being at WrestleMania 1, Jim Murray came out with Hogan and that, this is Superfly's first WWF pay-per-view match. That's right, yeah. And then he was at last Mania when he came out for like two seconds during a match and fucked up backstage. <laughs> 
must have left his bag of coke in his locker or something, you know? He he is fucking jacked. He is monstrous and he's old looking at this point. Mm. Jesus mm. Christ. I still love his song. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he actually arrived in the WWF initially in 1981, so he went eight years wow. before the first pay-per-view. Wow. He had that famous splash off the cage at Madison Square Garden. What year was that? Uh, it was in October 83 against Don Morocco. Oh, shit, I wasn't even born yet. Jeez. And he, did he did he get a push after that? Because that's one of the most iconic moments of WWF history. You know, you'd expect him to get a huge push after that. What happened? Uh, no, he didn't. He like that was actually for the IC title. He never held a belt in the WWF. There's a good reason why. I'll tell you in about twenty seconds. Um, <laughs> tell so, us now, Jay. I want to know. <laughs> no, he left. He left for the AWA in 1985, and then he returned here to WWF TV earlier in 1989. He never held a belt in the WWF because he is alleged <laughs> to have. He's a coke fiend and he killed See, his girlfriend. I was right. Oh, God. Yeah. And that's Are you serious? Alleged. Sorry, say that again because okay, okay. <laughs> this needs a bit of gravitas. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, so he would take loads of coke and he'd bring girls on tour with him. And there were rumours he didn't get a push or a title because he killed his girlfriend. She was like a dentistry student. When she was going on the road and ex-girlfriends of Jimmy Snooker would ring her up and tell him, like, he's a violent guy. Fucking watch out. And... <sighs> I actually had a look at this. <laughs> what happened is the girl hit her head off something. Um, Snuka said it was on uh, the side of a road, which we can't find any blood for. He's like, oh, I have no idea what happened. And Vince would do all the talking and he'd be the kind of, I'm the idiot savage, what are you doing? I'm the gentle giant kind of thing. And everyone else was going, this is such bullshit. And there wasn't much inquiry into it at all. And the attorney... Uh, Richard Cushing cited that uh, once Vince McMahon remarked, Look, I'm in the garbage business. If you think I'm going to be hurt by the revelation that one of my wrestlers is really a violent individual, you're mistaken. So, uh, That's bad stuff. Holy shit. Yeah, I've kind of <coughs> completely changed my mind about Snooker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jesus Christ, I'd never heard uh, anything like that before. That's uh, terrifying, yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. You know, that like someone you kind of idolised as a child would would do that you know oh my god yeah. well the case is actually still open it was never ruled as an accident or a homicide or whatever it was just it kind of time ran out of it and nothing get your one it. from cold case on it like <laughs> I had to lighten it up so yeah. that was well funny. I was going to use I was going to say uh, Mick Foley can put that in his next stand up show <laughs> sorry sorry now would be a good time to tell the story about when I met Virgil. You met Virgil? Yes, I did. I told you this. <laughs> but tell <laughs> them that. Yeah, all right. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was at a wrestling convention in, where was it? California. It was great because Christian was there. Got to, he was a lovely guy. <laughs> he did. Yeah, there. yeah. Did Andrea diss Christian? She was like, oh, oh Christian, yeah, get a picture was, with Andrea. Oh, yeah, he was going to... What did he say? Do you want a picture? And she said, no, no, it's fine, or something like that. She probably thought she had to pay for it, even though she didn't. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, it's all right. And then I said something to her. that I lightened the mood immediately. Yeah, you yeah. You know, it, because it was like... I'd imagine wrestlers are used to blokes carrying their reluctant girlfriends yeah, yeah, yeah. along. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. 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 from Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh yeah, and Slick was there, and Harley Race. Didn't go near them. But anyway, so, racist. There was so much. <laughs> Brilliant. So anyway, I was. We were just walk, on the way walking out. So on kind of on his own out out in the middle of nowhere was Virgil, and he was supposed to be there at the Million Dollar Man, but the Million Dollar Man didn't show up. Was so, there a sign that said? Million yeah, Million Dollar Man and Virgil. Oh you gosh. You know, and he was sitting there on his own, and I was like, I was walking by, and then I kind of try to avoid making eye contact <laughs> with him and then Andrew's like hey look he's looking over at you and I just turned and then bang eye contact so I kind of had to go over blah 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 hey man and I was trying to be a little bit clever I was like oh you're a maths teacher now yeah and he's like well Madison Square Garden yeah yeah he was just trying to sell me shit so I'm an idiot like I gave him ten dollars and he signed a fucking Polaroid. A, a Polaroid and we took got a picture taken yeah I felt sorry for him man huh? really embarrassing but that's and that's he moves really reason. badly now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't he on like Raw or TNA like in the past year? Yeah, he was uh, DiBiase's butler. 
That's right. Uh, junior. Uh, yeah. For someone who didn't wrestle for most of yeah. his career, he, those few bumps he must have taken mm. must have really fucked up his hips or something. <laughs> I have to say, yeah, I'll blame Big John Stud for that. I have to mention that the virtual panic, that's his gimmick. Like He's like, I've got this oh, yeah. massive marquee oh. that says Ted DiBiase and Virgil. And it, Ted DiBiase isn't going to be there. He's never going to be there. Oh. He's never booked. But you might see Ted DiBiase and go, oh, where's Ted DiBiase? Yeah, like, yeah. And then he's like, oh, come in, yeah, let me yeah, show yeah. you this. And before you know it, you're giving him $10. Yeah, yeah. What Apparently, he works the pathetic thing. Yeah. I don't know how much work it is. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't getting a lot of action, but... Yeah. Uh, the Brig Butler, right? The Brigler. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing hamburgers. <laughs> DiBiase, uh, yeah, fucking hell. Last year, made of any every pay-per-view since... WrestleMania last year, and now he's in a mid card throwaway match with Snuka. This is even worse than mid card J. This is the fucking toilet break mm. before the main event. God this is right. the this is like the divas match. Like <sighs> poor DiBiase. Yeah. Jeez. Um. Actually, this match should have been DiBiase versus Roberts, but uh, you know, Jake Roberts wasn't on the card. Needed to be written off TV for four months because rehab. Not injury. Not rehab. Uh, apparently battered a fan in December 88 and he got arrested and so he needed time off to deal with his legal troubles so he'll be back but he, but he was grand to have on the mania card and rumble oh he? He, he he got uh, snared in May and so he's out for four months dealing with that and we'll see at the series okay all right, so let's fuck this match. The best part of this match was about 40 seconds in when um, Superfly Snooker tried to do like a double leapfrog spot when he ran the ropes and he mistimed it and landed right on uh, Teddy's head. And mm, he, um, uh, he cupped him, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. Shivante tries to cover up and Jesse's just like, what are you talking about? He messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, so the finish of this awful excuse for a match is Snooker goes up for the splash, Virgil goads him into chasing him, so he does, and Million Dollar Man catches him and gets the count out win at 6.24, and then um, Snooker gets his heat, ba- heat back by splashing Virgil post-match. And it, the splash was fantastic on Yeah, it looked Virgil. great. I, I have it down here, the match, fucking shit, the post-match was really good. It's interesting seeing Virgil on the same pay-per-view as... Dusty Rhodes. Oh, yeah, it's very good, very good. Uh, I uh, don't care. Virgil Reynolds is Dusty Rhodes' name, and Virgil was named after Dusty Rhodes. I didn't know that. Yeah. It was Million Dollar Man going, <laughs> fuck man. They actually went to St. College as well, so they're best mates, but he thought... Uh, Million Dollar Man. Joseph. Turbine Universe. Yeah, Million Dollar Man thought it would be the parents. <laughs> Boston! <laughs> <laughs> Million Dollar Man thought it'd be hilarious to name his servant after his mate Dusty Rhodes. Okay. Like, obviously, his, Virgil's his whole life has been a fucking joke. Like he moved to WCW and renamed Vincent. Him. Yeah. Mm. And then they renamed him Shane. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and <a> Stephanie. <laughs> and fucking creative control. There was what's this guy's name? Mooney. Um, Sean Mooney. Yeah, Sean Mooney oh, in the crowd. The crowd getting pushed around. He looked really uncomfortable. Actually, like, <laughs> they always have him doing that yeah, shit, don't it's they? Terrible. Like, yeah. no, I'm wrong. He did suck, and they probably want him to quit or something. But right. it was like Adam Lee. They used to put uh, initially. They put him in the crowd. Adam Lee, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Adam Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Just hurry. And then we got the Hulk and Bruce's interview, okay. and then Hogan Hogan saying. Since we hopped up, brother, we've been hanging and banging. Now, I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> so says Linda Hogan, yeah? <laughs> but the promo was fucking great. Hogan was, uh, Zeus Brothers gonna look into uh, Beefer's eyes, and then Beefer kind of just, just a crazy eye in the corner. Was, what the fuck was that, Prudus? Jesus Christ. <laughs> trouble understanding. From the Meadowlands Arena to the multitudes beyond, I, the genius, full of glory and renown, share my wondrous words of wisdom with this Summer Slam spectacular to validate my mortarboard and gown. Yeah, validate. Brutus Beefcake and Hulk Hogan shall be running for their lives. The highest card they're holding is a deuce. 
They are totally unqualified to match the royal flush that shall be coming from the Macho Man and Zeus. Scary Sherry is the term that Brutus Beefcake used in slander, and he had the nerve to call her overdressed. That's when the barber got a trim that wasn't on the schedule, because Sherry is a cut above the rest. On the other hand, Elizabeth is absolutely useless. She is less than just another pretty face. Now, now wait a minute. When you add the unknown factor of the human wrecking machine, tonight the Hulk shall be in second place. Okay, so we've got the genius full of glory and renown. He reads a poem. This is Heel Lanny Poffo, Savage's brother, which was never mentioned on air. So, uh, Leaping Larry Poffo here with an awesome poem. He was a jobber in the WWF from 1985. He, we've just never seen him on pay per view. Um, yeah, so he turned heel two weeks before WrestleMania, where he just started giving out about Hulk Hogan and praising Macho Man. So, he made it to TV as the genius a month later. And yeah, so this is a shtick. He sticks up for the heels and uh, censures the faces. I thought this segment was great. I love this guy nearly as much as Honky. He just, I just think that the character is money and he does it. So I was like, no one else could have done this other than this guy. He's great. I don't know about that, Steve. You, uh, you think so? Quite a few people could do that, given he's just reading somebody else's poem. He writes all this shit. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This oh, well, I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, he, 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 like, still goes around schools and colleges and writes poems and really? reads them out and wears his little thing. Like, that's, board, yeah. that's pretty cool. I think he's so fucking cool, this guy. Uh, I love him to bits. Did they ever mention that he was Macho's brother? Never. Never, ever, never. ever. Ever. Okay. Ever. Uh, which is weird enough. Like, he's a lot better looking than Macho. Macho Man's an ugly man. Well, you have with a big s- onion hair like, like uh, Jushin Liger <laughs> he's horrible looking I just was. feel he looked a bit semi and all right <laughs> <laughs> like he did cover up as much as your face you can wild hair big glasses big huge beard mm. basically mm. you never see his face it's time for our main event alright it is Randy Savage who comes out with Zeus and with Sensational Sherry versus Brutus Beefcake and his own theme, Hulk Hogan, without Liz. So that's very odd. So here we see Tom Tiny Lister. And um, yeah, it's just to give you a big, bit of a background because we didn't get any voiceover off of this. So uh, April 22nd on Superstars, just after Mania, Brutus was on the Brother Love Show and he was interrupted by Macho and Sherry. Brutus calls her Scary Sherry, which is bang in the 80s. Like. Uh, he gets attacked, they make a tag match, and then Macho brings in Zeus. And his gimmick is that he's impervious to pain and he doesn't sell anything. So he's basically Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> so the build up to this is that Zeus would come out and they try to punch him and he wouldn't, you know, he'd just laugh it off. And No, he do seen a face. <laughs> <laughs> he'd seen a face, he beat up Hogan and Beefer, wouldn't sell a chair shot, that kind of thing. And it was oh, very effective because um yeah, this guy, he's he's not a wrestler, so this is the best booking you can give him, like. Mm-hmm. As well as you're trying to make this guy to be a, a, a viable threat yeah. to Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. So. This guy was over. They got that job done. The fans were digging, you know, like he, he had pretty good heat. And the fans were pretty much just into everything that, that he did. So big thumbs up for a uh, booking team on this one. Big gorilla thumbs up. Boo-doo. Macho's theme hits as Fink introduces Liz. And uh, she's looking well. She doesn't look as good as she has done in the past, but still very good. Yeah, um, I'd agree with that. I think she's yeah. lost a bit of glamour. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's that her dress she's wearing isn't as beautiful. She's not slutty enough. But oh. she was never slutty, though. No, but she was... That was her gimmick. It's wholesome. The whole charm is that... Do you mean you she's not showing off enough flesh? Yes, yes. The whole charm yes. is that you get to make her dirty. You know what I mean? When? I never got to make no, her like, dirty. No, that's, you know, the whole dream oh, of okay. someone as, you know, as pure as that. <laughs> Quantum ring. <laughs> Everyone. Uh, um, she goes comes out to Savage's team. Why didn't she come out yeah. to Hogan's team? Why did she come out to the WrestleMania team? <laughs> <laughs> Linda McLean's <laughs> team. <laughs> um, yeah. Did you hear Beefer's team? By the way. Yeah, I, t- I mentioned it last oh, time. What's it's that? like a jazzed up Owen Hart team. That's that's where you were. Yes. Did you see the little kid in the front row dressed up as the Beefer with his, yeah. his shirt? Yeah. That was hella cute. I that have to say, <laughs> it was awesome. Really cool. uh, starts off macho 
takes a swipe at Liz. That's pretty <laughs> Looks like all my points were blown out of the water right there. <laughs> I gotta give you that one, Steve. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, I thought it was craziness that Zeus starts the bloody match. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, how, uh, how do you guys feel about the overly theatrical, I'm going to choke you? I love it. <laughs> But like Kali does it and Andre as well. Yeah. It's, it's it's just pure wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love it. I, I, it worked. Um, do you see? You know, so Hogan try, is trying to take Zeus off his feet, so he gives him. I don't know, but the clothesline doesn't work. Then he goes for this dainty kick. See that? He's like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> if only he was wearing a skirt. <laughs> Did you notice like a Hogan and Macho were like calling the spots to get Zeus through the match? They were always, oh, give me a headlock, blah, 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 yeah. next three spots. It's very obvious. Believe it or not, I actually didn't cop that. Uh, probably too busy. And there was one where was Macho saying. says, fuck it, and it's like, oh, point to Hogan. Har, har, har. It's like, just <laughs> fuck it. I'm, this is our tactic. That's great. <laughs> the next spot is the tactic. <laughs> uh, Macho hits Beefer with the purse and knocks him out. And so, yes, this is a loaded purse. So you know, make sure. Was this that Sherry's purse? Was yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Hogan breaks up the pin though, and then Macho goes out of ring, and he goes makes a beeline for Liz, and then gets cut off. <laughs> Why? It was great. It's like it's terrifying. It's yeah, scary. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was anybody counting bear hugs in this match? Oh, there was one like from. <gasps> there was Zeus one, was there? Yeah. It just, well, there was just one long bear hug. Thirty-five minute head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> In saying that, they never lost the fucking crowd, though. Because mm. no. this character was so over that no matter how shit you are in real wrestling, the crowd are going to lap it up, you know? As, as you said, this guy was was made out to be a legitimate threat. Mm. And this guy, I've never he was seen... almost godlike. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It was... I, what a job. Is it, no, I don't <laughs> Maybe Hogan should have teamed with Kratos, you know? <laughs> Team with Hercules. Damn, no, he sucks. He's Mexican. <laughs> Hey Zeus! <laughs> hey Zeus! <laughs> yeah, it was great. Hogan was selling a lot. He was taking a beating uh, near the start of the match, and oh, I just noticed with this cock fuck Hogan, man, not to be outdone. He no sells Savage's elbow. Big elbow, jumps I, up. I'm massive writing there. I was absolutely furious you know, when I saw. Where that. is your fucking shovel? That's like fucking leading a doom shit when they came back to Raw in 2003. Do you remember that? Kane hit the choke slam. Rob Van Dam hit the five star. Back up, not a bother. They they go backstage and they immediately get fired. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, hmm. obviously you're not going to sack Hogan. Of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. Oh, whenever Hercules leaves the company, he just oh, it's amazing. He just no sells everything. Like the match is a squash. Really? But like you're punching him. Ha ha. Count the lights right. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's, it's fucking amazing. The no sell on this. It's a big Goldberg job. After Hogan totally no sold the elbow, uh, Macho Man gets fucked out and Beefer's already taken out. So for like the, the first time, it's Hogan and Zeus kind of one on one and they're circling around the ring and the fans are going absolutely mental for it. This was awesome. Some strange woman came knocking. Um, yeah, she said, "Have you got enough electricity or something?" <laughs> I've got, I got two buckets. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's probably like a sneaky TV license or something, you know? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're fuckers for that. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, I hate Jay. I really fucking hate him. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jay, what a dickhead. What a cunt. <laughs> yeah, dear. And when he comes back, to you just just pretend or. You know, we like him. Just you know, <laughs> keep up the pretense. Just, yeah, for the second podcast, yeah, here, here he comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
like, what's up, hey, G-Man? Hey, what's the story, dude? <laughs> Sorry, I love you guys. Um, yeah, the crowd were going fucking mental for Zeus and Hogan. Um, yeah, no, it's Hogan, actually. You know, he did, like, rake the eyes to Zeus, and, yeah, that works, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't have to rake, like, his left eye, though, wouldn't he? <laughs> So there's a big spot where Liz uh, tips over Sherry into the ring where you see she's got like lovely garters on, you know. She's got pretty hot legs, isn't mm-hmm. she? Um, Liz did none of the work in that, that was all Sherry. But she got a massive pop though, so oh, yeah. just you know, just for being there mm-hmm. and stopping Sherry from uh, interfering. The fans were going absolutely mental and then Hogan finally knocks Zeus down to one leg after about a 15 second uh, funky chicken selling style. Liz of course comes in and stops Sherry from uh, interfering and then the beefer comes in and does the same with Macho. The fans are all up in their feet going absolutely mental and then Hogan smacks Zeus with a purse. (laughs) It's all (laughs) All this fucking great build up and he beats him with with a a purse. purse. Yeah. (laughs) Shame. What was going on? And then he does a body slam and the leg drop. It's the one, two, three. And Chavante, along with all the fans, go ballistic. I have to say, like, it, you can't really give out the crowd went mental and it was just hard not to get wrapped into it, you know? Yeah, it was, it was great. It was the best you could do with a celebrity, like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. One of the better matches with a non-wrestler that... I can think yeah, of it anyway. Can, yeah. uh, Big Show May, whether it was better than this, probably, but you know, obviously it didn't have the fans and all that stuff, but as a match, it was better. Like the whole ending was just a complete clusterfuck. Everyone got involved, but it was done right. Yeah. You know, clusterfucks generally don't work, but this really, really did. Very skeptical about how this match would play out. I, I expected even, this to be god yeah, awful. Even at, like, at the end of WrestleMania 5 podcast, you said, oh, Zeus is coming up, and you're like, oh, for oh God, God sake. yeah. Really pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I have no complaints about this match mm. at all. So after the match, we get an atomic drop to Sherry, and Liz hits her with the purse. While Hogan keeps the heels at bay with his set of clippers, Liz and Beefer cut Sherry's long, long ponytail. And then Hogan picks up the hair and puts it on his bald spot. <laughs> <and houses. laughs> yeah. Why not? To just, know. you know, why not? He, uh, Leslie cuts too high off. Uh, Sherry the first time so he doesn't actually cut enough hair mm. off him so he actually just cuts her again and it's much shorter the second time around I, th- I would have thought that was um, a hair extension or something though no? the last her, her last appearance she had like the little perm did she? so she couldn't have grown a big ass fucking ponytail since then that's very oh, true fucking liar kayfabe and me kayfabe and me <laughs> didn't actually get your hair cut you just got yourself mulleted <laughs> At the very end of the show, you know what Hogan does is like three poses, the yeah. bam, the bam, and the bam. Yeah. Beefer fucked it up every time. He <laughs> didn't know the three poses. <laughs> and he fucked up like four times in a row or something. Maybe you should have a super pose down with Hogan. <sighs> so yeah, oh, it was an amazing venture of chastising Hogan for beating up a woman uh, when he atomic dropped Sherry. <laughs> awesome. So the faces elaborately celebrate in the ring Hogan's theme and we're done. Yeah, what did you think of pay-per-view as a whole? As a whole, I thought this pay-per-view was really fucking good. Uh, main event was awesome. We had two really good tag matches. Warrior Rude was much better than I thought it had any right to be. Then, then of course, we had, you know, like, Snuka and DiBiase which sucked. Dusty match sucked. The Hercules match sucked. So, overall, I'd say that the good definitely out, out, outweighed the bad. Uh, I really, really liked this show. I'd uh, I'd concur with pretty much all of what you said. Really enjoyed it. One of the best pay-per-views we've watched since we started. Mm. Um, the main event, just, just brilliant. You know, it it just goes to show you don't need to have the best wrestlers in the world to make a great match, which is something I've probably been accused of before giving out about shit wrestlers, but this is how to make it work. I'd say that the first half of this pay-per-view was great, and then it fell off a cliff with uh, Garbage and the Twin Towers, and those lads had only kind of picked up. Like, I was motoring through the pay-per-view, then I hit a bit of a wall, yeah, you know? Totally. There was actually, like, a large segment of promos as well, which made me tired as well. I kind of... 
I have to mention, just general standard of wrestling is a lot higher this year than like last year's SummerSlam. Because like, I just had a look at last year's SummerSlam card. Fucking Ken Batera, JYD, the Bolsheviks, Dino Bravo, Don Morocco, honestly. You know, every yeah. pun your fucking hair out. And, you know, replace them with the Brain Busters, the Rockers, Heart Foundation, um, Perfect. You Rude reckon Warrior, you any know? of that has... Dusty. Anything to Rampers. do with the fact that we've kind of gone from the the wrestlers from the 70s to the wrestlers that we grew up with, you know, so it's like kind of, you know, it's like going home. That's who we grew up watching and not Don Morocco and Pantera yeah, and whatnot. Uh, I completely agree with you. Now it's, we're, we, I can get into these pay views a lot more because I know and love these, pretty much everyone on the card. Mm. So that that's a big help. Mm. Um, I'd have to think that since you know we've been watching wrestling so long that we we look we know enough to uh, look at wrestlers critically. Like we can see Honky Dog Man, great character, terrible wrestler. Dusty Rhodes, same thing. Mm -hmm. And like, like uh, I never watched Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard no, as a kid. Never. But man, they're fucking awesome they're, on this paper. I'm you know? a big fan of yeah. Arn Anderson. I I think he's tremendous. Yeah. So you know, although, although you know, uh, nostalgia plays a part which is why we watch it and stuff, the, no, the wrestling quality is a lot higher than it was a year ago. And, yeah, out with the 40, 50-year-olds, in with the 30, 40-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that, that did let the pay down was Tony Schiavone. Um, I actually but, didn't uh, mind him in the show, uh, believe it or not. I, now, I hate Monsoon, but what Monsoon does is he makes Jesse Ventura better. I totally agree with that. Uh, Great this point, yeah. is the first time I don't have Jesse down for my MVP mm. tonight. Mm. And it's for the reason you just said, Steve. Mm. Totally. It's because Sean... Gorilla makes him ten mm. times better. Mm. He can't put up a fight. He's just completely outclassed and just backs down to everything that Ventura says. But I thought, as a play-by-play -play commentator, he was much better than Gorilla, though. Just that there wasn't the, the the bond there between the two of them, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, and even his play by play pissed me off, but probably not as much as as, as gorillas does. But still, oh, he Pearl Harbor him. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, I love that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big sucker for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like technically, I think Shivani's better, but he's got no charisma. Yeah, so. yeah, that's yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, um, but yeah, overall, thumbs up. Sounds good. All right, lads. It's a good show today. It was an awesome show. Yeah. The Survivor Series is coming up next, and at the end of the year, we'll do no holds barred. So we got the Survivor Series, a traditional Survivor Series, no longer teams of five, strive to survive. We've got five teams of four, strive to survive. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, want, do you want to know the main event? All right, the main event is the Ultimate Warriors, headlined by Hogan, obviously. <laughs> uh, the Ultimate Warrior, The Rockers, and Jim Neidhart. Where's Brett? He's, yeah. in, he's in a different match. Versus the Heenan family, which is Bobby Heenan, Andre the Giant, your boy, Non King Haku, and Aaron Anderson. No, Tully? Uh, someone failed a wellness test right before the paper. They didn't have wellness tests in the Yeah, but it Oh, that wellness. <laughs> <laughs> Smellness. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking awesome. Alright. Good night, lads. So from V1. <laughs> good night, them. And OC. Yeah. Alright, good night, folks. Me, 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 me. That was a good one, lads. Very good, good, very night. good. The Rockers, as we know, are a super, super team. They look like being champions within no time at all. They can combine their skills so perfectly. They blend so well. They have such good moves. Their understanding of tag teamship is just excellent. But look at the brain busters. They're there. They look awesome without doing anything. They just stand in their corner. They look at the opposition quite coldly, and they have just superb moves between the two of them. This should be one of the greatest tag team matches for a long, long time that we've witnessed here in this capacity-filled Madison Square Gardens. The sports mecca of the world, and it'll be on Anderson and Shawn Michaels starting it out.
Certainly the Rockers with quickness on their side. The Brain Busters a little bit larger, but really not much in that. I don't believe is a factor at all in this one. So we're watching Giannetti now in the ring with Anderson. And Anderson is the power part of the uh, Brain Busters team. Tully Blanchard is the brains and also the speed man. And he does exceptionally well for their team. The team of Giannetti, of course, and Shawn Michaels. They have speed, they have power too, and they certainly have ability in Excelsis. They've got it all, and Marty Giannetti now outside of the ring goes bombs away on Art Anderson. And Giannetti follows him back in and picks up the pace right there. Three rights, three lefts, and then another right by Marty Giannetti. And now it's Tully Blanchard getting both of the rockers. <laughs> and the crowd loves it. Well, the Busters didn't know what happened to them there. My word, Anderson can't believe that he's beside himself with anger. And Tully Blanchard is beside himself almost unconscious at the thrashing he took at the hands of Giannetti and Michaels. You see the Brain Busters there, and that's Anderson getting back in. As it is Anderson and Shawn Michaels, still the two that are supposed to be inside the squared ring. And hey, they're going to go again. A couple of verbal shouts by both of them, which mean absolutely nothing. Whoa, a little slap in the face, which doesn't mean a lot either. That has a little bit more authority, and that has even more. Two left hands and a hard forearm smash, all by Shawn Michaels, who spins Anderson off into the one of the corner, and hey, what goes around comes around. Well, I think Anderson there oh. was trying to rattle um, Giannetti, uh, not Giannetti, Michaels, into making a mistake, and in fact, what happened was it was Anderson who made the mistake, because Michaels came right back at him, smacked him around the face, and look at uh, Anderson now. Made the tag to his partner, Tully Blanchard. Blanchard in. Blanchard, Michaels. Two exciting youngsters, the Rockers. They can certainly put some moves together, and they'll put moves on you. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Like exactly. that. Exactly. And that, so much of it. I Your like Lord that. Jimpin, you know as well yes. as anyone is instinctive. You do it by instinct. Sure, you plan moves ahead, but something like that is bingo. It has to be done on the spur of the moment for it to be effective, and it was there. Yes, it comes natural to that team. Oh, yeah, you better believe it. Side headlock here. Blanchard didn't rush into anything there. That was a good uh, move by Blanchard not to rush into it. However, he has been caught now by Giannetti. Great timing. Great timing by Shawn Michaels. I'm Tully Blanchard on the inside as Janetti is tagged in from the outside. Here comes Marty Ooh, with a knee drop down on the left arm of Tully Blanchard. Oh, those biceps have got to be screaming. Nice shot there. A tag team type shot. You can see exactly what's going on from Anderson's point of view. <laughs> now you can see what's going on definitely from Anderson's point of view. A tag team that was a tag made that wasn't exactly legal. And the crowd starting to get into it for the Rockers. Shawn Michaels hanging on for dear life to the arm of Tully Blanchard. He's trying to get over and make the tag, and I believe he has made the tag. However, oh, the referee didn't see it, and he's going to chase Arn Anderson. And here's a tag for the Rockers, and suddenly Janetti is in. Well, the referee didn't see that one either. Well, Hebner should really change that because he didn't see it, and you're only supposed to call what you see. Hebner is warning the Rockers. Well, that's uh, not such a good move on the part of that referee. He should no. definitely call for that change back there. Tully Blanchard trying to get something going here with Giannetti, who hangs on to that hammer lock. Blanchard trying to hook the arm and get a snap mare with Giannetti coming over, not trying to hook the leg, and he does have the left leg of Giannetti, and down goes Marty, but he kicks out nicely. And he's right back in to that hammerlock. And so far, these first 10 minutes have been all in favor of the Rockers. There's been hardly any effective offense by the Busters. They have been offensive, they have tried some good moves, but they really haven't scored against the Rockers. The Rockers do it exceptionally well at the moment. Nice Better, in fact, than I thought it. they nice. would do. And now you have 
The Brain Busters double teaming on Janetti, but they're the ones that pay the price. And here is Anderson, and here is Blanchard. First one, then the other getting it from Marty Janetti, but look at this. And look at this, as Shawn Michael is there, a couple of quick back heel sabat kicks by the Rockers, and out go the Brain Busters. And that's brought 23,000 people to their feet here, because everybody thought that the Rockers were going to come off on the wrong end of the stick there, and they didn't. They matched them move for move, and still had a couple of surprises in store for them. Great, great wrestling. They looked at Versity square in the face and made it come out to their advantage as Anderson and Blanchard talk it over on the outside. Hey, there's no time out here, Iron. Ha oh, ha, these youngsters are really controlling the ring like veterans. Indeed they are. They are gaining experience, not only with every match they're in, but every minute that a match goes on. Great, great continuity between these two young men, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. They are really, really impressing not only Lord Alfred Hayes and myself, but the 23,000 here, this capacity crowd at Madison Square Garden. Uh-oh, Tully Blanchard gets a boot in there, and then a shot to the back of the head. However, Jannetty tags in Shawn Michaels, atomic drop. Uh-oh, Michaels misses the drop kick. Blanchard misses the elbow smash. But I think Giannetti has hurt his back. He should be tagging out now. That's what they do best, these youngsters. Their teamwork is so effective, and you can't stay in once you've been hurt, even just slightly. He really should have tagged out there. A hard shoulder block by Arn Anderson on Shawn Michaels, and now he really drills a left hand to the face of Michaels and digs into the body of Michaels. Back to the head of Shawn Michaels, and a whip here. Michaels to the top, back flip over. Great hip toss there by Shawn Michaels. Look at that. He may have him. No. Uh-oh, we've got a four-man brawl going on here as Michael sends Blanchard to the outside. Here's a double whip by the Rockers and a double drop kick, and out goes Anderson. Holy moly, another double drop kick by the Rockers. The oh. Brain Busters need Bobby Heenan right now. They certainly need a lot of help because the Rockers are making them look at the moment ineffective. They're dragging Blanchard back into the ring, and I don't think he's the correct man who should be inside. And I don't know that the referee knows who is supposed to be in there, as it is Giannetti with a whip here on Blanchard into the boots of Shawn Michaels, and that takes the wind completely out of the sails of Tully Blanchard. Here's a whip by Giannetti. Here's a boot by Giannetti, a front face lock by Shawn Michaels as he gets him up, tries to get him up into a suplex. However, it is turned around by Blanchard. Michaels turns it around to his favor, a roll up, a cover, but only a count of two as Michaels saw Anderson and coming and one after him and now Blanchard now Michaels and Blanchard goes to the outside so and clever, clever moves there by Michaels he really really showed us some great wrestling but oh, he showed us a little experience he followed the lion into the lion's den there and he got caught oh did he ever he got caught by a tremendous forearm smash from Arn Anderson, who you see on the inside now looking to the outside. And referee Dave Hefner is over there. And he is chasing Marty Jannetty to his own corner as Shawn Michaels tries to get it back together again. However, Tully Blanchard is right over there, and he's looking right straight down at Shawn Michaels. And that is not the place to be if you're Shawn Michaels. Michaels now in a lot of trouble being dragged back into the ring, and that spells Maybe possible disaster because Giannetti seems to be right out of it. Oh, and if you're oh. unconscious with a man in the ring like Anderson, it can be definitely the end. Anderson, certainly the biggest of the four men involved in this match. Oh, there's a hard whip with Michaels going into the knee of Blanchard. It caught Michaels right in the sternum, which will stop you dead in your tracks. And it has done that to Michaels. No two ways about it. And the throat on that top rope. And the Busters now doing exactly what they want to. And here's Blanchard strutting around the ring. He knows they've got the Rockers in trouble, and they're going to try and cut this ring off, which they have done for the last few minutes, for, from Giannetti getting back into the ring, and they've got Michaels trapped. 
Gennady coming from the far side, but being intercepted by referee Hebner. And look here, what the Brusters have on Shawn Michaels and how that man can even breathe, I don't know. Blanchard turns him over, gets a count of two, but Shawn Michaels instinctively kicks his way out of a pinfall. And the crowd starting to get into it for the Rockers. Right now, they need all the help they can get. They certainly do. And I'm surprised that Tully using this hole because he should have taken a much more offensive attitude because they really have the rockers, rockers on the run. Shawn Michaels broke that hole, but as Lord Alfred Hayes has mentioned, the Busters have cut off the ring on the Rockers, and Michaels was nowhere near or close enough to making a tag. Michaels rolls out of the way of an elbow smash, rolls out of the way of another one, then rolls out of the ring but delivers a blast, a blast with his right hand and another one that sends Anderson to the center of the ring. Michaels back in, trying to get Anderson over. Can he get him? Down he goes. Cover. And only a two count. There is a tag here as Tully Blanchard is in. And again, it is Shawn Michaels having taken a shot from the Busters. And just one can pretty much stop a man who has taken the punishment that Michaels has. And it has stopped Shawn here as out he goes. And is Tully Blanchard going to follow the man out? Well, the referee isn't going to allow that to happen. Not At least not yet. Blanchard goes and grabs the hair of Michaels and tries to take him to the turnbuckle, but it's Blanchard who goes, bombs away off that turnbuckle. And here is Gennetti, or beg your pardon, Michaels coming with a crossbody, count of two. Michaels trying to get to Gennetti, he can't make it as Blanchard did tag in Arn Anderson. And here's an abdominal stretch by Arn Anderson on Shawn Michaels, who has taken just a ton, a ton of punishment here from the Busters. Gennady tries to get back into it again, as here is a switch by the Busters, which Hebner did not see. And he's going to make him, he is going to chase Tully Blanchard and bring back in on Anderson. It really makes little of any difference because Michaels is in such a bad way. Small package here by Michaels. Referee was a bit slow in getting over only because he was admonishing Tully Blanchard. And now it is Anderson over the back of Shawn Michaels who is within a couple of feet of the tag of Marty Gennetti but just can't get there. Gennetti reaching over. Havener says, get your feet on the floor. Look at the predicament that Shawn Michaels is in. Whoa! Anderson with a forearm smash on Gennady. He comes on in. Hebner chases him. And it's double team time again as the Brain Busters double up on Shawn Michaels. And can he get out of this one? Well, he beat it. Beat it just so barely. I'm surprised here. The Rockers haven't been able to make a tag. And that really is a chink in there offensive armor because they should by now have made that tag but the busters are getting better and better the longer this match goes and they've really taken over on the rockers and that some of those blows although they look hard there really isn't a great deal behind them and look at that hey. good, good move look at that bridge by michael talk about condition in the backslide close but no cigar and here is, no, 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 no. There was no tag. I thought for sure he was going to get it, but they missed in midair. And Michaels, flat on his back, cannot get it back together again to get over to Gennady, at least at this moment. And Arn Anderson is tagged back in. And certainly the Brain Busters, the pressure of the two. Whoa, look at that. Look at that body-to-body -body suplex as Shawn Michaels is sent flashing to the canvas by Arn Anderson, who is slow to follow up, however. Great move that by Anderson. Oh, indeed. Took that man clean out of midair, slammed him down, did maximum damage there to Michaels. Michaels somehow or other lifting that right arm, and this crowd are right behind him, and I'm sure that that's the only thing that's motivating him, because he has taken such a cruel amount of punishment in this last 
five, six or seven minutes. Oh! It's hard to believe that a youngster could really stand up to that. Shawn Michaels got his knees up just in time, and as Anderson was coming down, he, he must caught Anderson make that in the solar plexus. He and must make that tag. Indeed, he has to. Indeed, he has to. It's imperative that he makes the Anderson tag. Anderson has made the tag, and Michaels has made the tag. And so it's Gennetti and Blanchard. Gennetti and Anderson. Gennetti and Blanchard. Anderson, Blanchard. It's all Marty Gennetti. Whoa, Anderson caught him in the solar plexus, and so did Blanchard. And here are the busters. Look at this. Whoa, head knocker time. And here is Shawn Michaels to the shoulders of Marty Janetti. Blanchard is there. Janetti comes over, covers him, gets only two. But what a move by the Rockers. Front face lock here by Janetti on Blanchard. Up goes Blanchard. However, from the outside, Anderson reaching in and pulls the legs out. He pulled the legs out from under Marty Janetti. Janetti is stunned when he hits the deck. And the three count goes for the Brain Busters and a W for the man of Bobby Hayden. And you can definitely put that down to experience because the Busters came through when it was most imperative that they should do. The Brain Busters won a match there. They dragged it right out the jaws of defeat. And that's what great teams can do.